Okay, in our video series on toxicology lectures and emergency medicine, in this video, we'll be talking about salicylate poisoning, commonly in the form of aspirin overdose. We'll discuss that what is the presentation of salicylate poisoning and how do you treat it in emergency department. First of all, common forms of salicylate found in markets are in the form of aspirin, which is acetyl salicylic acid, sulfasalazine, which is used in ulcerative colitis, and diflunisol, which is used in osteoarthritis. Salicylates have multiple effects, including analgesic effect, anti-inflammatory effect, and antipyretic effect. Therefore, they are commonly used by patients and can result in overdose. Overdose of salicylates occur if a person ingests greater than 125 mg of salicylates per kg body weight. Coming to the presentation of salicylate poisoning, as it is evident that salicylates first enter the stomach, so their effects are seen in stomach as vomiting, gastric irritation and nausea. Other than that, a classical presentation would be that patient would be having tinnitus and even deafness. Patient would be sweating and patient would be dehydrated. There will be hyperventilation, increased respiratory drive. In severe cases of salicylate poisoning, you would be able to see confusion, coma and convulsions due to metabolic disturbances caused by salicylate poisoning. We'll discuss about metabolic disturbances in a while. And in rare cases, you would also be able to see pulmonary edema in some patients. In children, the prominent effects include hyperpyrexia, it increases the temperature, therefore results in dehydration, sweating and hyperventilation in an attempt to cool off the temperature and hypoglycemia. Metabolic imbalances caused by salicylate depend upon the timing of ingestion. Initially, there is respiratory alkalosis. Respiratory alkalosis occur in salicylate poisoning because there is hyperventilation. As I said, that there is increased respiratory drive in salicylate poisoning. That increased respiratory drive causes hyperventilation and that hyperventilation washes out carbon dioxide from the blood. And carbon dioxide is an acid. Washing out carbon dioxide from blood will result in alkalosis. And the cause is respiratory, so it is called as respiratory alkalosis. In the later stages, what you would see is that patient would be in metabolic acidosis. Why does metabolic acidosis take place? Because the, in the process of glucose metabolism, aspirin blocks the Krebs cycle. When aspirin blocks the Krebs cycle, it inhibits the aerobic metabolism of glucose. When aerobic metabolism of glucose is inhibited, that glucose goes into anaerobic metabolism and anaerobic metabolism produces lactic acid and lactic acid results in metabolic acidosis. So in the later stages, you would find metabolic acidosis due to lactic acid accumulation. Investigations in salicylate poisoning include salicylate levels. Salicylate levels are the gold standard test for detecting salicylate poisoning. Other than that, electrolytes must be done. Since salicylate poisoning is associated with hyperventilation and respiratory alkalosis, that respiratory alkalosis is associated with hypokalemia. So alkalosis is associated with hypokalemia in electrolytes, you would see hypokalemia in these patients. And as I said that it also causes hypoglycemia, so glucose level must also be checked. ABGs must be done in patients to see the metabolic disturbance, to see respiratory alkalosis. If in the initial cases, in the later stages, you might be able to see metabolic acidosis. And most often what you would see is that there would be mixed picture of metabolic acidosis and respiratory alkalosis. Clotting profile must be done. Clotting profile must be done because there is increased risk of bleeding in these patients with salicylate poisoning. Why there is increased risk of bleeding in salicylate poisoning? There is increased risk of bleeding in salicylate poisoning because salicylates inhibit platelet aggregation. Inhibition of platelet aggregation would lead to increased bleeding time. So clotting profiles must be done. 
coming to the treatment of salicylate poisoning in the treatment of salicylate poisoning you must have abc approach airway breathing circulation after protecting the airway and breathing then you give activated charcoal if the patient presents within one hour of ingestion of salicylate and the ingestion was greater than 125 mg per kg activated charcoal binds the salicylates and inhibit their reabsorption in gut and when you have given the activated charcoal, you perform the salicylates level after few hours. And if the salicylate levels are less than 300 milligram per liter, it is a mild poisoning. In mild case, what you do is that you observe the patient for six hours. And if the patient has normal ABGs or venous blood gases, then you can discharge that patient. And if the patient is having 300 to 700 milligram per liter of salicylate level in the blood, if that patient has moderate poisoning of salicylate. In moderate cases, what you do is that first of all, you replace the potassium. As I said that these patients will be having hypokalemia. So you replace potassium if the potassium is low. And then you give bicarbonate. Why are we giving bicarbonate in salicylate poisoning? We are giving bicarbonate in salicylate poisoning because bicarbonate alkalinizes the urine. And alkalinizing the urine causes increased excretion of salicylates into the urine and excretion of salicylates from the body. So in bicarbonate alkalinizes the urine, which increases the excretion of salicylates in urine. 50 to 100 millimole of bicarb is given over 30 minutes. Bicarb is given slowly because it is a venous irritant. And then you perform the plasma salicylate levels. And if the plasma salicylates level are greater than 500 in adults, are greater than 350 in children, you further do the alkalinization, urinary alkalinization with maintaining the pH of urine between 7.5 to 8.5 is done by giving bicarbonate to increase excretion of bicarb. You give 3.5 to 5.5 millimole per kg of bicarb. So you give 50 to 100 millimole over 30 minutes and if the plasma levels are high, then you further give bicarb at this dosage. Coming to the severe cases of salicylate poisoning, a case is called a severe case of salicylate poisoning if the patient is having salicylate level greater than 700 milligram per liter or patient has developed severe acidosis or CNS failure, coma, confusion. In that case, urgent dialysis is needed because that patient needs urgent dialysis, washing out of the salicylates from the blood and these patients might also need ventilatory support. In summary, we talked about different forms of salicylates present in the markets and overdose level greater than 125 mg per kg, the symptoms and the severe poisoning symptoms, children, hyperpyrexia, hypoglycemia, initially it causes respiratory alkalosis, later on causes metabolic acidosis, investigation salicylate levels and electrolytes include hypokalemia, ABGs, clotting profile, and you give activated charcoal in mild cases, you observe the patient, in moderate case, you replace potassium, you give bicarb. In severe cases, you do urgent dialysis. So this was all about salicylate poisoning. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on toxicology lectures and emergency medicine. The link of those videos is given in the description below. Thank you very much.